onto the women's race now, the women's Tour of Flanders. I don't know how long it is because we don't know the parkour. Just like on the men's race, they're keeping it private. Last year's winner, I mean, it was domination from Bulls Dolmans. Anna van der Breggen, no, Anna van der Breggen was, she was in the group and I, she was my heavy, heavy pick for the race win. She came 11th, but her, it was her presence that allowed Chantal van der Broek Black to go up the road and attack late, and Amy Peters came second, winning the reduced bunch sprint for second, ahead of Capecchi and Brennau. And, yeah, Bulls Dolmans, now SD Works, dominated that race, tactically perfect, and they're back this year with their stacked team. They haven't brought their stacked team to the last couple of races, so they've been a bit yep. absent, but they got Chantal van der Black, Anna van der Breggen, Jolene Dorda, Amy Peters, Alina Cicchini, and Christine Majerus is all I can see on PCS at the moment. Who's your favourite there, Benji? I have to say Anna van der Breggen yeah. and van der Black. It's kind of a situation <laughs> because <laughs> she I don't think Strade. your daughter is on the same <laughs> way. Yeah. I think Jolin Dore is not on the level where I would expect her to compete for the victory at this Correct. race. Yep. Perhaps in the third or second group she can sprint for it, but it didn't look too bright the last... Uh, was it Handwebel? I think it was where she got... Yeah, she got she dropped. She was not looking to find on the final day. Amy Peters, yep, she's going to be uh, up there towards the end, but I don't think she's going to be the deciding factor for the victory. Uh, Christine as well. I think that is going to be between the uh, Van Der and Van Dunn riders in that team. So Van den Broek, Black and Van der Breggen, because I think it always ends up in a situation where SD Works got multiple riders while the other teams don't. And that allows them to try and attack with one person, then the next, then the next, then that tires the other people. It also tires them, but it doesn't tire them as much because they don't need to do the work to do the chasing in that second group. And that's a tactic that always works for SD Works. And get it? SD Works? Okay. Um, <laughs> I think that it's also going to likely work out on um, this Sunday, although I don't have a favorite in their team that I'm personally rooting for. But I think they've got a really large chance of taking this race home once again um, with their two uh, strongest riders. Yeah, Their strategy is going to be will it down, get multiple riders in a front group, and they will likely have at least Van der Broek Black, Van der Breggen, Peters, and probably Majerus in a front group, then roll attacks. And Chantal Van der Broek Black, they throw up the road to bait out the other teams to chase. And sometimes they just can't chase her down, or sometimes they get one rider with her, and then she smokes them on the final climb, <laughs> like at Strade with Elisa Longaboard Guini. Going to Trek Segafredo now with Ellen Van Dyke, Diagon Cordon Rigaud, Longa Borghini, Lucinda Brand, Ruth Winder, Benji. They've had the strongest team the last couple of uh, classics and semi classics, Hen Favel, Hem and Dwarz Dur. They've not got, well, they got one top 10 at Dwarz Dur with Van Dyke just, and then they missed out at Hen Favel, Hem. I haven't been able to make my Hen Favel, Hem video for reasons outside of my control that have been very frustrating uh and i've even got it prepared the women's video so but anyway my thoughts on it were that they shouldn't have sent longa borghini so early i think when they did such a good job causing the split they then reduced the benefit of that by sending her and then having a much larger and relatively fresh group chase i think they should try and do what SD works to don't chase her or oh, don't attack her early with your favorite Longa Borghini. I know she did that at Trophy Off Rado Binder, but not as strong a field and a hillier parkour, a limited bunch behind that were tired. I think, yeah, just follow moves and try and attack late. I'm talking last five, seven Ks with Longa Borghini, and maybe no one brings, brings her back. Ooh was cracking terribly uh but yeah do you think diagnon's not looked as good this year benji not as capable of winning a reduced bunch sprint even if they did tire out the other riders yeah i think she hasn't been on the level that i expected her to be in but then again i think that it's also because 
in the races, except for the Wars of London, and then Longo Borghini ended up looking to be the person that they push forward. And I think that leads to the other. I think if one person is looking extremely good, then the other is going to uh, give everything to make that other person also win if it's a team, if they work together for a single goal. And I think this team seriously does that. I think they decided on the Wars of London to try it for Alan Van Dijk. It also wasn't the most important race, I think, for this team. No, Definitely one knowing one. that. Yeah. And yeah, I think that Longo Borghini is favorite for me, though, for this team, for RVV. And I think that you've got it right when it comes to uh, the strategy I would take on as well. They've got a really strong team, but they got to make sure that they can keep that strength the moment that SD works is pushing forward and have the upper hand when it comes to numbers, that they also have somewhat of an upper hand when it comes to numbers compared to the other teams. So, yeah, I think it's going to be... Um, the issue that I have with Trek Segafredo is that I think as they works, we'll try and force them into doing chasing behind riders from SD works throughout the race itself, which will lower the energy of those riders at Trek Segafredo towards yeah. the end. And I don't think the duo of Longo Borghini and Dijkden are good enough as a duo or equally good as the duo of Van der Broek Block from the Bregen. Uh, I think the difference isn't huge, but I think the SD Works duo is just better at the moment as a duo. And that's why I'm I'm not sure about how they would best handle it. I think Gordon Ago is also not underestimated these days. She's really good these days. So I did yeah. Wars of London also was in that group doing the work, Italian and French flag next to each other. Um, yeah, those are like the teams that I that I want to shout, but there's so many other oh, opportunities here that... SD works on the provisional start list. I've checked across multiple websites. I know it's provisional, yeah. but no Demi Vollering, sixth in Strade at SD works. She's... That's she, true. She'd be making front grip. I don't know what's going, whether she's injured or what's going on there. That's pretty surprising to me, but anyway... Canyon Shram been active the last couple of weeks. You'd think their heavy favourite is uh, Kasia Nuviadoma. She it's tough for her to win, Benji, because she's not as strong on the climbs as Longa Borghini, Van der Breggen, or Van Vleuten. She can follow, she's shown that. She can contribute to a group. Is she strong enough to attack them and win? No, I don't think so. And her sprint as well is not particularly strong like Van Vleuten was able to yeah beat her in Dwar's door out of the sprint pretty pretty easily and uh, Trofreo Alfredo Binder and the bunch kick behind a triple Ludwig beat her as well so yeah that's a problem for her I expect her to be up there top five though Nivea Doma as well Gopeki Benji for the Belgian national champ on live racing new team this year Paladin looked good at Hen Favorham. Alison Jackson, what do you. She came second, Kapeki, by the way, in Hen Favorham behind Voss, first in the Samin, fourth at Omloop. I think anything less than a podium will be a big disappointment for her, or do you think RVV doesn't suit her as much as the easier classics? I am completely biased, but she's my favorite to win this. <laughs> I'm going to push her forward already, early on. I think that we were in Belgium re really happy when she showed up in, was it, 20, was it 2018 or 2020, where she uh, did her first like top result in the Lotto Sudal colors. I think she got 15, 2017 it was. Okay, that explains. I was looking for it and couldn't find it. Where she uh, surprised everybody, or not really. Yeah, she was. it was pretty surprising that she was up there at that level that year. And I think that fifth place showed that she could do it in the future. In 2018, it didn't really end up happening because that race uh, was not ridden by her. In 2019, I think uh, she didn't really have the best of races, 32nd. And I think 2020 and 2021 really changed because in 2021, we mentioned it, I think, I mentioned it on our awards podcast we had at the end of last year, where I thought she was the second most consistent Cobble rider throughout the season of the entire women's peloton after not Chantal von der Brugge, but Longo Borghini. So those two were my 
were my most consistent ones throughout the entire season. And I think we saw that last year with third in the RVV, third in Brugge de Pana, second in the Invevelgem. And how did she start this year? You mentioned it. She started this year with fourth in Omelope, winning La Samain. Strade was not too great, but I recall her having a, a puncture or something at a really bad moment. And fourth, no good course. Twelfth in Omelope from the Westwood. That's not the best one, but it's also not a very important race. And then fourth in Brugge de Pana, second in the Invevelgem. I'm, I'm feeling that she's really strong this year. I'm feeling like she's one of the best cobble riders on the Berks version, at least, the hills um, of the entire peloton, one of the best. And RVV is perfect for that. And I wouldn't put her in the favorites for a, a Paris-Roubaix for women's, which unfortunately has been canceled. Yeah, we talked about it a tiny bit, I think, at the end or something. Um, but yeah, yeah, I feel like RVV fits her. The only issue is that I don't think her team is necessarily the strongest compared to the likes of an SD Works and a Trek Segafredo. So the race has to kind of form itself in a situation where she either is on the attack or she's in a group that wants to cooperate. Because if she's in a group that doesn't want to cooperate, there's not much she can do in that situation. So yeah. the problem is that those other two teams will dictate the race for her, and that's her vulnerability. Jumbo Visma women have got a Fairly strong team. Anna Henderson, Romy Casper, Anuska Costa, Rayana Marcus, Nancy Vandenberg, and of course, Mariana Voss. Mariana Voss is my favorite for this race. She looks so good. Uh, Trofeo Alfredo Binder, second there. Hilly course, really strong. Third at GP Oettingen, seventh at Strada Bianca, and first at Ken Favelham with a whew, nasty sprint. The 300 meters with Kopecky right on her wheel. I think she can win the race from a big group, from a small group. Her presence will probably be pretty terrifying to other riders. People seem unwilling to work with her too much when she's in the group for pretty good reason. But Voss is, she's climbing really well. That's why. It's Voss. Yeah, it's, just, it's Mariana Voss. I don't need to justify it. And that pick. There it is, it. WNT Pro Cycling will be riding for. Lisa Brennau, one would think she's come, I think, third or fourth here last year. She's really strong. She looked good at Hen Favelham too. I think she came third. Uh, the German, I don't see her winning, but she'll be up there. Uh, who else? Valkar with Lisa Balsamo. I think it's too hard for her, uh, although they have a nice kit. Drops the coal. We've got Danny Christmas, <laughs> Maria Martins, Emily Moberg, Sarah Penton. Marjolein Van Teichelouf and Maika van der Duin. Uh, so we'll be watching Drops the Coal. I think we'll have a few of those riders in the early break at the Tour of Flanders. But bike exchange is what I want to ask you about, Benji. Mm-hmm. Sarah Roy is who they've been riding for a fair bit, Australian national champ. I think they've got a ride for Grace Brown here. I think they don't need to have a situation where they have either ride for the other unless it's absolutely necessary. I think they've got the benefit of having Sarah Roy as a sprinting candidate and Grace Brown as the early on Van Barla-like uh, character, the person that can have an early attack in one of the earlier hills and keep that up at a large engine and just keep going like that. And I think Grace Brown is perfect for that. She needs that longer solo to take it home, I think. And I don't think Roy is up there with the people that are likely going to make the moves here on the hills themselves. So it's good to anticipate with someone like Grace Brown. So it's nice to bet on the two horses for that team, I think. One for the sprint, if it comes down to it, but also one rider to push forward beforehand. I think that's a perfect strategy for that team. What do you think? They they have been choosing. They've been choosing to chase moves with Grace Brown rather than have her get in them. So I think they've got to just... Put Brown in lead groups, have her attack, have her go long like Dylan Van Baal style. She's shown she can do it and have it as a reverse lead out. Then Sarah Roy can sit in the group behind. If it comes back together, it comes back together. Fantastic. Go for the sprint. And yeah, I think they got to use Grace Brown that way. Otherwise, they're just going to have her chasing. Um, yeah. DSM women's Benji, it's not been good for a fair bit, actually. Yep. Uh, Flochi Mackay let Men's out. As well. Lip, sorry, gone. 
men's as well. It's been a, yeah. a weird situation for both, I think. I know. Like they had Mackay leading out Lippert for the sprinting hand fable and then Voss just kicked off Lippert's wheel and she ended up yep. coming oh like maybe even out of the top ten at hand like twelfth. And I don't know whether Mackay again, same situation for bike exchange. Mackay's looked pretty good. And she's got the pedigree in these sort of races in classics. Uh, I think they should be trying to let her get in early moves as well. And if it comes back, it comes back. Surely Laboo's here. But, yeah, they got the strong team on paper. I like all their riders, Anderson, Kirkman, Koch, Laboo, Lippert, Mackay, but it's just not clicking at the moment. And maybe Lippert's not progressing the way we expected or kicking on after the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race win in 2020, which is a hard climb she punched over in the wet. But, yeah. Just, I'd like to see them get a good result. Um, I'd like to see them it clicking for them. That's why I mentioned them. Really, the big team we've not mentioned so far: Movistar, Emma Norsgaard, the revelation for. I mean, honestly, they're yeah. they're way better than the men's Movistar team. Emma Norsgaard, revelation, best U twenty three rider at the moment, I think, and so she's wearing a light blue jersey instead of the Danish national champs, which is very annoying because you can't see her. Uh, but she's in here. Will it be too hard for her? I'm not sure. But they got Anna McThurn Floyd, who just won Dwar's Door. She's looking back. She was G'd up, her first winner for Movistar. What do you think their plan is, Benji? Van Vleuten following, attacking, and if it all comes back, you've always got Norsgaard for the sprint? Yeah, uh, I think that is a similar situation as Bike Exchange for me personally. I think they've got Norsgaard, who's got that sprinting kick, but she's also pretty good at the... Uh, Cobble Hills. I don't think she's up there with the best on the Cobble Hills, oh, but she's that still can still improve at that age. Yeah, indeed. Umlo, she was second as well, right? And that was a yep. not Anderson necessarily in. the easiest race either. And Bilbo yep, Panda. Exactly. But Samin was a bit of a, a different race, though. Yeah, I, think. I know. But she's just been good all season. Really compare that. Yep. I, um, I hope she does well. And well, from Vlerton, third like that the healthy person that I see stage, Benji. Room. The disgusting one. Yeah, but the second on it mm, with the with the you're right VAM climb in bad weather. You're right, but you can't say that the top notch SD Works riders were there. I don't want to shout at Lonica Unikin and saying she was not riding well. She was riding amazingly, but she's not a Van der Breggen or Van der Broek block yet. Yeah, I know, and I think that's the difference there, and. I think that she's going to do well, but I'm still kind of like Van Vleuten is the early attacker and Norsgaard is going to be the person that is the follower, not necessarily the sprinting version, not necessarily the Sarah Roy version, but a bit more than that. Yeah, I see Norsgaard as, as an outsider for victory sometimes here. So yeah, I think that Movistar is indeed, like you mentioned, a very uh, a very good team. But there's there's also just another... like. Quite a number of other people that can do really well here. And that's also not necessarily all on these like full force teams. I think we haven't really gone too in depthly on FDG. We mentioned them a lot at Strade Bianche because we felt like their strategy towards the end of that race wasn't ideal to get the best possible place in that race. But I think they've got one, a team that has two candidates to make it in front groups with Ludwig and Cavalli. But I also think they've got an issue with Ludwig where while she's good enough to get over the climbs and get into the groups, she needs to figure out a way to get away from the group because she's likely going to end up in a group with a sprinter better than herself. And that's why it's really hard for her to take that role to her victory she's hunting. Um, what do you think? I struggle to see a way in which with Trip Ludwig can win this race, Benji, because the the level across the board, which is great, is rising. You've got riders like Emma Norsgaard coming through, additional threats who have, and Kopecky, who can climb on the cobbles. And then if people were finessing and it comes back, bang, that's hard people to beat in a sprint. And then if the, for the race to go the way Ultra Bloodwig wants, She's got to attack on one of the climbs or follow a move on one of the climbs of Van Vleuten and Van der Breggen. 
and then beat them in a sprint, which is hard. I think Uthrup Ludwig needs a uphill finish, and we don't have that. So, I don't know. She came third in 2019. So, but that being said, I think it's a different landscape. Uh, Bastianelli won then, yeah. but that was from a group, and she came third in a group of three with Bastianelli winning the sprints. That's the, that's the problem. Like, mm-hmm. I think she can get a good result. I think she can get on the podium if she's in a group of three. It's just the sprint is the issue. Um, but, yeah, do you – what would your plan be if you were FTJ? I mean, you've got Farlin. She's good. Cavalli – was there and then not there the other day uh, and it's got a kick. Strata, you were very critical of them riding for or the way Cavalli rode. I thought it was not good too. Who do you think they should ride for? Should they just see who's going well on the day? Yep, I think the latter, you know, you said. Um, I don't think it's easy to judge and take this team and say, oh, you're going to be the best on the day or you're going to be in a situation where that yeah. is folding a certain way. The ideal situation is, is if they both make a split and are in that split to get away the likes of SD Works Riders and Trek Riders because yeah. then you won't have those two teams following or chasing behind. Particularly but it needs to be very specific to uh, to get those riders in a situation where they can win. I um, hope they ride well because I think uh, she's one of the channel favorites when it comes to our followers as well. That uh, Cecily utrup Ludwig is uh, one of the queens of women's cycling. But um, I think all in all, I hope that I hope that we get a situation where a rider like that can get into an opportunity of winning because she's strong across the board all round, but the sprint is what is nagging at her, I think, at the moment. Yeah. And she is in a group and she can't win in that group with the sprint she has right now. And I think that's uh, the weakness she has right now, not as a criticism. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I think uh, we mentioned most of the teams right now, but I'd like to um, talk about two teams in particular. I think one team being this Planter Pura team that is on the start list. I don't know if you've read the story or have seen the story of that no. lantern, but um, basically all the riders in that are part of teams that do cyclocross, uh, women's cyclocross. Uh. And three women's cyclocross teams have decided to go under one sponsor to ride on the road with the riders from those three. I think Celine Alvarado was a uh, world champion the last year. I'm not a hardcore cyclocross person, but yeah, I think me she was, she's like a young uh, world champ last her, right? year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think she was the head, com- head, head opponent of Lucina Brandt, who won this year in the world championships. So very interesting team, very interesting to see them race. I don't know how much they can do because I've got no clue what they can do on the road. But the couple races are on paper what they are better at, although their Hindu-Abelham performance was not really where I was looking for it to be. But I'm curious what that will offer up. I think the main issue that I've got with this team is not actually related to RVV. We know since this uh, morning, spoilers for the people that haven't seen it yet, that paris Bay is being cancelled for, well, postponed until the 2nd and 3rd of October. Those are the two dates that are set right now, officially set by the paris Bay Twitter account. And now, keep in mind, they were planning to ride Roubaix with this team. And Roubaix is now in the cyclocross season, where these three are going to be riding on different teams when it comes to contract. On the same weeks as you would have cyclocross, I think. I don't know the exact cyclocross season, but I think that might actually become troublesome for them. I hadn't thought of that. I'm too depressed about the Paris-Roubaix news to really accept it and deal with it. I hope they get a good result here at the Tour of Flanners. I'd like to mention <laughs> Team Tibco, Silicon Valley Bank with Lauren yep. Stevens and Sarah Giganti, the young Australian. like to see her do well. Top 10 result here would be huge. What was the second team you wanted to mention, Benji? Uh, yeah, uh, Tibco. <laughs> uh, I want to mention Ali BTC Ljubljana. They got a former winner in Bastianelli. Okay. Uh, yep. She's a strong rider, not looking quite on the level of like Kopecky, Longa Borghini these days, but she gets in a reduced group. She can sprint, and that is something you can never take away from someone and is always a threat. Christoph, Bastianelli, sort of riders, so you always got to respect them. Marlon Rosa, I'd like to see her not attack her early, ride a conservative race for herself. Any other long shots? you like 
here, Benji. We both said our winners, me, Voss, you, Kopecky. Any any long shots? I'm going to go with Norsgaard as long shot. I want to see it happen. Kopecky's my all-out favorite, but I want to see Norsgaard win that something Norsgaard big. Like no, nah, I, I, I wanted her to win against Wevelgem. <laughs> I wanted her to win against Wevelgem, and it didn't work I out. She and I was that. so yeah, sad agreed. afterwards. Yeah. And it really annoys me that she's wearing that oh. that U23 jersey as well, because I've been looking the entire against Wevelgem race <laughs> for know. a Danish shirt. I thought she was dropped the and whole then time. I ex- yeah, I explained to my mom what the Danish flag looks like, so that when she sees it red with a white cross, she mean? needs to shout at me. And she starts shouting when the Swiss champs jersey shows up. So I'm like, no, that's not Emma Norsgaard. <laughs> right. So eventually I found her with like 8K to go, which was really sad. <laughs> uh, that's struggles. a point of contention for me too, as well as, yeah, banning all the purple jerseys. Need to go. I'm looking through to see a, uh, a long shot pick. I don't. I don't really know. I, when I see Van der Breggen and Van Vleuten on the start list with Voss, I'm like, they're pretty good at riding their bikes at the moment, and um, I don't really, I don't really have a strong feeling about anybody, to be honest. Northgard is someone I'd like to see too, or Kopecky. There's no odds that we've seen for it, but they actually would be long shots. Lisa Longaborghini, I just, I want to see her in this current form against the two big guns. Now it's going to be interesting to see her against Van Vleuten and Van der Breggen. They all kind of try to do the same thing. So I wouldn't mind a triple header showdown between those three as well. But I, I worry that they might not work together and they might bring a little quick person with them like Kopecky or Norsgaard. Any final thoughts on this Tour of Flanders race? Benji, do you know the order they're doing it in? Is it after the men's? Uh, yes, I was uh, in doubt for one second, but I reminded myself that I saw a tweet about it. Okay. Um, it's not like Dwarzer Vlaanderen. It's going to be more like Ken Webelgem. Yeah. So they're going to have the uh, men's race finish relatively uh, early. I don't know what hour, though. I think it was somewhere last past five our time, the good time zone, not yeah. the bad time zone of our late. kangaroo here. And I think the women's race was finishing around two hours later. So... I don't know how we're going to split up the videos, but I guess we'll figure that out before then because uh, if we uh, – yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It'll come All around right. eventually. Can't wait for that. I hope you enjoyed our Tour of Flanders women's preview. And if you're listening on podcast players, the entire Flanders preview, if you listen to the women's race, we've got the men's one as a separate YouTube video. We don't have the parkour to show, unfortunately, but I'm just happy there's racing on. Can't wait for it. the uh, culmination of all these classics we've been watching so far, particularly with the sad news of Roubaix being cancelled. So lap it up while you can and enjoy it. We'll see you with the recaps for Flanders on Sunday. Ciao.